Hello, this is Political Forum for Wednesday, April 5th. Today we welcome 31st Ward Alderman Millie Santiago. Thank you, Millie, for being with us. Oh, thank you so much for inviting me. You're welcome. Uh, my name is Freddy Calixto. I'm a board member here at CAN TV, and you are watching a live interactive program brought to you as a community service by CAN TV. Be sure to tell your friends that they can also watch the show online at cantv.org forward slash hotline. We welcome your questions for the Alderman uh, by calling us at 312-738-1060. During the next 25 minutes, we'll try to get as many calls uh, as possible on the air. So please uh, call if you have a question for the Alderman, 312-738-1060. Okay, Alderman? How are things going in the 31st Ward? Freddie, things are going really well. We're doing a lot of a lot of things, new projects, new businesses coming in my ward. Uh, we're walking the streets to make sure that people uh, are happy with the services that we are providing. And we, at the same time, take um, different service requests because we need to be out there. Uh, you know, every time my schedule allows, I'm out there walking the streets. Awesome. Great. Well, that's a good thing to do to get to know your constituents. Oh, yes. Uh, let me ask you a question. Uh, we have a lot of worries concerning immigration and ICE and agents. Uh, what concerns you most about, about that? You know, Freddie, after um, we had the uh, new administration in Washington, there's been a lot of fear in the community, especially in the, in the immigration community, fear of being deported. Uh, we've seen some issues that have been happening in Chicago, and uh, we want to make sure that we are out there to provide the information that our community needs. As a matter of fact, uh, I have taken advantage of this great initiative that the Mayor Rahm Emanuel uh, has taken uh, to make sure that Chicago continues to be a sanctuary city to protect uh, the rights of the immigrants. And uh, we are having a, um, a workshop this, this Saturday, uh, April April 8th at St. Genevieve Church at 10 o'clock in the morning to provide uh, the residents with the information on what the rights are, what to do when they are stopped by police, when a police officer knocks on their door, what their rights are as, as immigrants, um, how to make uh, an emergency plan, uh, how to make sure that uh, the kids are, are safe and they have they have a, a plan in place just in case something happens. So this is something that we are taking uh, very positively because we want to make sure that the, the residents out there uh, get to participate and, 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 and get the right information, not, not the wrong information. Right. Well, we can probably put that on here to get more information. Uh, oh, yes. So we'll show it here. Yes. And then I'll put this back on. Mm -hmm. uh, let's put this like this. Okay. Okay, so we'll, we'll uh, let's see if we can do it like right this. Oh, if you can see that or is that backwards, I'm not sure, but that's uh, the information. Can we turn it? You have to turn it <laughs> turn around. around. There you go. <laughs> there it is. We'll get, okay. it, we'll get it right. There it is. <laughs> see, so it's there's the information for Know Your Rights Workshop. Uh, it's uh, Saturday, this Saturday, the eighth. We've been going. We've been going through uh, through the schools, churches, uh, the community, the grocery stores, uh, because I want to make sure that these programs that are uh, available in, in the city of Chicago get uh, get out there for the community because there's a lot of need. We're going to have experts on immigration, attorneys assisting and answering all the questions that people are going to have. And uh, I think it's going to be it's going to be a great thing. I expect a good turnout. With and we had about eight thousand flyers printed. Oh, wow. So I'm um, I am very optimistic that we're going to have a very good crowd this Saturday, um, the eighth at ten o'clock. Great. Well, we have a caller on the line with a question. Caller, what is your question? Hi. Thanks for taking my call. Um, I see that you're talking about um, this Know Your Rights um, workshop that you're having. You mentioned um, that we are a sanctuary city. Um, I wanted to ask what uh, the alderman thinks, if, if she thinks that the legislation for us as a sanctuary city is strong enough for us to keep our funding, because I did hear some information about us potentially losing our funding. 
Well, I, I believe that what we have in place in Chicago, it is strong enough because the city of Chicago has been a sanctuary city for a few years now. This is not a new, a new thing that we have implemented in the city of Chicago because Chicago is the third uh, biggest city in, 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 in the United States and one of the biggest cities with, with immigrants. And so uh, thanks to, uh, to Rahm Emanuel and, and in fact, I remember when Mayor Daley was a mayor, he was also in, in, in support of the, of the immigrant community in, in the city of Chicago. So we have to uh, continue to, be, to work stronger than ever because we have to send a message to, all the way to Washington to let uh, the new administration know that this is, this is, this is a, a, a nation of immigrants and the city of Chicago is, is, is a great city thanks to the diversity that we enjoy and the immigrants are the, great, the greatest part of, of what the city is all about. Uh, thank you, caller, for that question. If you have a question for the Alderman, please call us at 312-738-1060. And again, we'll show the information about the Know Your Rights workshop coming up this Saturday. Uh, another issue that's uh, throughout the city of Chicago is public safety. It's still in front of the minds of many Chicagoans. The police department's having town hall meetings to get feedback on community policing. How can we get more community involvement when it comes to policing? Uh, you know, Freddie, we, we have been uh, walking the streets and taking with us, as a matter of fact, a flyer that we have prepared from, from our uh, office to, to have some key points to remind people that it is so important to call 911 when there is something that needs immediate police attention. I am encouraging the residents to be more proactive when it comes to, to taking care of each other as neighbors. I remember when years ago, everybody in the block knew each other. They exchanged phone numbers, but we don't have that now. And so I'm trying to encourage people to get back to those old times when we, we cared for that immediate neighbor, you you had the number, and every time there was something uh, kind of uh, interesting or, or something that needed immediate attention, people would call each other. So I'm trying to also, um, you know, encourage neighbors to be to be the family that we should be. Uh, we're also trying to encourage people to uh, form more uh, block clubs, because when you have a block club, you work together. You work together, and uh, and people get to share and inform each other. They do a block party every year to kind of mingle and 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 have a fun day and bring police officers. And and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm 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 an alderman that goes to almost every block party in in, in my ward. And sometimes I go to ten different block parties in one day because I want to make sure that people do know that we are supporting this great idea. And with me, I sometimes I bring some officers to walk around and play with the kids. We bring um, a, a fire truck to kind of open a hydrant for the kids to, to have fun. We also encourage the residents to go to the CAPS meetings. Sometimes it is really sad for me when people don't go to CAPS meetings because the block is nice. The block, there's nothing wrong with the block. And you know what? Even if it's if it's if there's nothing going on, you have to go to the CAPS meeting and, and get to know those officers that are patrolling that particular beat. And that officer will become your friend later on. And so it is very important to, to be part of, of all these programs that are available before before tragedy strikes. Yeah. Uh, we also try to go to the uh, local school councils and let them know that we are there to help them and to get parents to, to also participate uh, during local school council meetings. And, um, and also one of my ideas that I've, that I've had is to, uh, to encourage the residents to, to form a community public safety committee. So if we had one person per the, per area in, in within my own ward, you would be amazing at the power that that community 
uh, that, that, that that committee would have when it comes to fighting for uh, better public safety. So see, these are all the things that, I, that I'm trying to do. I am also working very closely with the uh, 25th Police District. Uh, Commander Escamilla has been very supportive, and every time we had a, we have an issue that needs immediate attention, I'm not easy when it comes to letting them know that I need that I need them to take care of that like as soon as possible. So, um, uh, strengthening and uh, improving the relationship with the police, I think, is going to make a big difference because uh, you know that you and I know the police has been under under fire yes. during the last couple of years in Chicago, and we want to make sure that we that we do the best we can under under our capacity to to try to to improve that relationship between the police and the residents and build the trust that we need in Chicago. Great, great. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope we continue to do that work. I thank you for that. Thank you. Uh, please call us if you have a question for the alderman. The number is 312-738-1060. Uh, th let me show the map of the ward so people can get an oh, idea yes. mm -hmm. of uh, the 31st Ward. Uh, here's your information. The uh, office is at 2521 North Pulaski Road. And the map shows it as it is there uh, from the... From Central Park all the way to Major Street, which is west of Central Avenue. We have, uh, we cover uh, Fullerton, Diversity, Belmont, and part, and part of Addison. So our, our, our communities are Belmont, Craigin, Hermosa, uh, we have part of Logan Square. We have a, a little bit of uh, Avondale. So our, our, the third first word is, is pretty diverse. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a caller. Caller, what is your question? Hello, caller, are you there? Hello. Uh, hello? Yes, hello. Yes, yes, yes. What is your question, please? It's uh, concerning, actually, a, a CPS. Um, there was a, a bill recently introduced uh, downstate um, in terms of uh, there would be a blocking of any type of new charter uh, school in any district, a school district that has a low financial rating, which would be like a Chicago public school. So I want to know if uh, the alderman's um, response to that, if she agrees that we need to reduce the amount of charter schools that are coming into the district until we make sure that everything is set financially with the current schools. As a matter of fact, I joined uh, State Representative Will Gusardi uh, less than two weeks ago. Um, and uh, we, I, I did support the uh, the uh, the initiative that he was that, that he was leading. Um, I believe that our priority should be our neighborhood schools. I I also believe that the parents should have the right to choose, but our public schools should be a priority. Um, if there's money for more charter schools, then that has to be the same amount of money and commitment. Uh, to fund our public schools. Uh, in my ward, I'm telling you, all the schools have been hurting, especially Kelvin Park High School with the, with the loss of so of millions of dollars uh, within the last uh, five years. And, uh, and let me tell you that it, it's, it's not good when this is happening because uh, the message that we are sending out there, if we continue to promote more charter schools, is that our neighborhood schools are not good enough. And, and I think it's a wrong message. We have to make sure that those public schools are funded the right way, that there is enough ser uh, services and resources for those kids, because I want to make sure that, they, that, that the morale is, 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 is up and the, uh, that our, school, our students that go to public schools do, do, do feel that support that, that we need for them to, to, to be able to go to school every day and to, to achieve, to get to graduate, graduate and, and dream big, just like any other student in, in the city of Chicago. I am pro neighborhood schools first, absolutely. Well, thank you for that uh, question, thank caller. You thank you very much. Uh, Alderman, uh, you talked about walking the ward mm -hmm. and getting your constituents involved. Uh, there's another uh, way that you do that, participatory budgeting. Yes. Uh, this is a popular device for your ward. Can you explain the process and how it gets involved? How people get involved in your ward? You know, that. Fred, that that uh, program is 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 bringing so much information and education to the residents. I think I am the number ninth 
aldermen, I think there's about between seven and nine wards that have adopted this, this program. Uh, this is going to be my third year. Um, we, we, uh, we implemented it from the first year that I started because it brings not only the opportunity for people to feel inclusive, yes. but the opportunity to people to educate themselves on how we, the aldermen, get to spend $0.5 million in our menu budget. So people do have the opportunity to bring um, an idea of a project that they want to see in their, in their neighborhood. Uh, let's say something that has to do with infrastructure, a dog park. Um, um, money for something that is it's, it's, it's so needed in one of the schools. They get to, to bring ideas on, on public safety, um, a new uh, stoplight that is needed somewhere. And so it's, it, this is like a contest. You know, at the end, at the end of the process, we we get to pick the, the, the best projects and the projects that we that we can complete. And then uh, the residents of the ward get to come out during a frame of about two weeks and vote for, for the projects that they believe would be the best for the ward. And so the project that gets the, the highest amount of votes is the project that we get to implement. Awesome. And so at the end, I think that uh, when, when we get to complete a project that people brought, thanks to their I I input, you know, they feel proud. Yes. They feel yes. proud and they say, oh, that dog park was, is, is done thanks to, thanks to my vote. That those bridges were cleaned and these murals were created thanks to my vote. So I think it's, it's the greatest opportunity that people have to, to, to be part of what we really want to see in our ward. So we are about to enter um, uh, the, the, um, the PB program for this year. Um, and I really hope, I really hope that this year uh, we get to see a, a highest uh, turnout of people wanting to come out and vote because this is, this is not for me. This is for you, the residents of the wards. So I um, continue to be a very optimistic person right. when it comes to that because I really want to, uh, to uh, promote this program and let them know that it is very effective, it's working, and things get done if you vote and come out and participate. Great. Well, thank you. We have a caller on the line. Caller, what is your question? Hi, hi. Thank you very much for taking my call. I, I wanted to ask the alderman if she had any thoughts on the story that came out earlier today regarding former police superintendent Gary McCarthy. He said that he's been encouraged to run for mayor of the city of Chicago. And I just wanted to know, um, kind of in light of everything you just said, if you had any thoughts on that. Oh, wow. You know what? I have not heard. This Me is the either. first time I hear that uh, the former police chief, McCarthy. Are you, are you talking about him? That's Gary she, McCarthy? That's what she's talking about, yes. Well, this is the first time I hear. Well, you know what? I encourage him or anybody to... Uh, that, that, that has the desire to represent uh, the city of Chicago and, and uh, drive the city uh, in another direction to, to do it. Uh, however, I, I, I thought he was a very uh, intelligent and capable person. Um, but um, since I don't know anything about, about that, I wish him the best of luck and I'll be, I'll be looking forward to read more about it. Great. Well, Carla, thank you for letting us know that. Uh, let me show your website and you can talk a little bit about your website and how, how can people get uh, more information on your website. Yes, they could go to aldermansantiago.com and uh, you, they, they see the, my, my office hours, the projects that we are involved, the, uh, the committees that I, that, I, that I belong to, and uh, all the initiatives that are, that are taking place in the ward, how you know, the different issues that are going to be um, up for discussion in the last uh, council meeting, or, or um, different uh, information that the people really need to know. Um, we also try to put um, other events that some community organizations are having so that people do, do get a chance to, to also see uh, what's happening, not only in, the, in, in my ward, but throughout, throughout the city of Chicago. Great. Thank you. And then you can get uh, sign up for email alerts and as, uh, your newsletter as well through the website. Well. Absolutely. Good. Thank you. Uh, you're watching uh, CAN-TV's Political Forum, a service of CAN-TV. 
My name is Freddie Calixto. I'm a board member here at Can TV. This is a live interactive show, so please call with a question for the alderman at 312-738-1060. Uh, if you have any questions for the 31st Ward Alderman Millie Santiago. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's go back. Um, let's talk about the municipal ID. The mm -hmm. municipal ID, this is a program that was discussed at City Council. Can you talk about that? Yes, um, in, in, this is very exciting because um, this is something that uh, the city clerk uh, of the city of Chicago wants to implement is, is the uh, creation of a new ID for the residents of the city of Chicago. As a matter of fact, I attended uh, a briefing with her and some other colleagues about you know, the uniqueness of this ID, the need to create an ID for the residents of Chicago. There are some pros and some cons, like in everything. Right. It, um, it's uh, very uh, in the early stages of, of, the, um, of the initiative, but, you know, I think it's, it's a good idea, but one of the, I, I think I was the, uh, the alderman that asked all the questions, because we want to know how much it's going to cost to the taxpayers if, if the ID is going to be something that is going to issue uh, free of cost. Um, how the, the immigrants or those people that are afraid of, uh, you know, ID theft or people who, who do not trust where that information is going would, would uh, likely to take this, this initiative. Um, you know, how the information is going to be protected which is something very important. Uh, we talked about other cities like New York or San Francisco and LA that have already implemented something similar oh, okay. that, that has been working. Uh, the mayor has said that the idea of this municipal ID would, would help um, children. We are thinking of uh, kids uh, from 14 years old and, old and, and, and up. Um, homeless people who, who don't have any, any ID sometimes, you know, some, some people may go to a hospital, may go to a, to a shelter or a clinic or, 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 or another agency, and they don't have any form of ID. Um, I, I also question what type of ID the person is going to present in order to have this municipal ID issue, and how how accurate is the information? What happens if the person loses the ID in a couple of months and they come back to renew the ID and uh, they have to pay a fee or is the ID is going to be free again? So these are the, I, there's a lot of questions that we have to address because when we talk about homeless people, for example, yes. uh, what type of ID do they have? Sometimes these people don't have absolutely anything on them. Uh, we have talked about veterans that are homeless. Mm -hmm. um, I think it has the best intention, but we have to make sure that, the, that, that this is something that would be uh, beneficial, that would serve the purpose, and that uh, it would be hard to duplicate or tamper or, you know, use as some form of, um, you know, using the wrong name. Okay for other purposes. So th there are a lot of things that we have to, to consider. I believe the ID could also be used like for special discounts when you go to, to the city uh, museums and things wow. like that. So I think it's an incentive in a lot of things for seniors for some type of discount sometimes. So I think it's a good idea, but we have to make sure that before we we vote on it, it's, it's going to be something effective and it's going to have the best use possible. Great. So there's mm -hmm. still some questions to be answered oh, yes, on this definitely. ID, but thank you for that information mm -hmm. and update. Uh, we're running out of time. The time goes oh, pretty wow. quick yes. here. Uh, we have a, you want to talk a little bit about Earth Day cleanups that you have planned? Oh, yes. Yeah. Uh, we have uh, we have some uh, street cleanups coming. Uh, we do that every year in our ward. We get a bunch of uh, volunteers and students uh, who can come out and put their, their gloves on and get a broom or, or the equipment to clean uh, our ward. We, we do it around schools, around parks. The first cleanup starts uh, April 22nd and we are going to be cleaning a portion of uh, Fullerton Avenue. And, and so I am, I'm out there with them, Great. cleaning and uh, doing everything possible to set a, a good example. 
It's about setting an example. If I can come out of my office on a Saturday to join a group of kids to clean in front of your house, I think, I think it would motivate you to come out of your house and clean what has been left in front of your house because it is our city, it's our community, it's our streets, it's our ward. So I think by leading by example, it's, it's, it's a good thing. Right. Um, and um, Let me it's, it's basically to encourage uh, the, the kids and the young generation to, to be part of, of what the, the, the beauty and the, the pride of our community is all about. Great. Well, here's the, the phone number again for the office if you're interested in participating in the cleanup or any other questions that you want to ask the alderman, you can always call their office. There's the information. Uh, we have run out of time. I'd like to thank Sylvia, our, our phone technician, for helping us out as always. Uh, thank you very much for participating. Callers, thank you for your calls. We appreciate it. And thank you all thank for you being so with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's this a is, pleasure. This has been great. I hope the information we, we provided is uh, beneficial. Great. Thank you very much.